This is our fifth computer session and we will write a MATLAB code which leads in the results that we generated in session four where we generated a spatially variant lattice of triangular unit cells arcing around some kind of bend and we play with the fill fraction as well. Then we save that to the file. But that was just a two-dimensional array containing zeros or ones because we made a binary lattice. What we want to do now is read that in. We want to generate a two-dimensional mesh without using any toolboxes from, uh, from MATLAB. That way, if you're, if you're not using MATLAB or don't have the toolboxes, you can still do this. And we can generate a mesh. And then in the following computer session, we'll read that mesh into Blender. We'll extrude it. And then we have a physical three-dimensional thing that we could 3D print or do whatever. So the first step in this code, we don't really need a dashboard here since everything was done in the last, last computer session, the last computer program. But we do need to load that data from file. Okay, so we'll actually load the, the MATLAB, the MAT file. It's dot .mat is the extension. So load binary lattice from file. SV lattice2d, if you recall, that's what we called it. We saved SLVB with DX2 and, and D, DX2, DY2. Okay, so we now have that in memory. Then we want to recalculate the grid for it. So first thing, we need to know how many points are in the grid, and we know that from SVLB. We'll say NXNY equals size of SVLB. And I would like to just stick with ordinary DX and DY, so I'll copy the information over from DX2 and DY2. Now that we know the number of points and the cell size, we can calculate the physical width if we need that, and the physical height of the grid if we need that. And then we can generate our axis vectors. And we're done making our grid. So let's display the lattice now that we have our grid. Show binary lattice. We'll subplot to 1, 3, 1. And we'll use our image SC code. So the first thing is we'll call image SC. XAYA SVLB. And we want to get the parent to the image. HH, not just H. And then in the parent, we will set y dir to normal. And that'll fix the image SC draws an image upside down. That'll make it right side up. Do an axis equal tight, which we really always want to do for spatially variant lattices. They look strange enough anyway. And if they weren't proportioned correctly, it would be even more confusing. So this is the binary lattice do a draw now because we'll do things after this that might be computationally intensive enough that MATLAB won't draw this. So let's go ahead and run this, make sure we didn't do any mistakes. Okay, we see our lattice. We saw a bunch of stuff get displayed to the screen, so we're missing a semicolon somewhere. Looks like right here. We'll run it again. Okay, so there's our binary lattice. We've done that. We're now ready to move on to the next section of the code. Now this next section is not really needed here because it'll still be helpful, but because this is such a small lattice. But in general, if you have very large lattices on grids with many, many points, you will want to downsample this to a low resolution grid. The whole reason we needed the high resolution grid is because we were calculating very, very high frequency gratings that had very short periods. But once we built the unit cell, the unit cells tend to not vary as abruptly as those high spatial frequency components. So we actually are free to downsample, but there's some tricks when we do this. So let's go ahead and do this. Reduce resolution of lattice. 
first thing we'll want to do is pick what is the resolution of our low re uh, lower resolution lattice. So lower resolution grid. Let's just pick 100 points because I know that'll mesh very quickly. And let's call it NX2 now. NY2 round NX2 times SY over SX. And that command will make it so that if we read something in that wasn't square or rectangular, that there would be a different number of points along the y-axis so we can retain somewhat proportional grid resolution. Since we're going to do an interpolation from our high resolution grid to this lower resolution grid, we'll create axis vectors that start and stop at the same point. So we did this before using lin space. We will start at XA1. We will go up to the last point at XA, but we will use NX2 number of points. Same for Y2, we'll use lin space. We'll start that at the first point in YA. We'll end it at the last point in YA but we will use NY2 number of points. Now that we use lin space, we've uh, potentially messed up our grid resolution had we calculated it. We didn't actually calculate it here, but we can go ahead and do that now. So we subtract the second point from the first and that gives us the spacing. And we can do the same for Y. Okay, so that is our lower resolution grid. Now we'll do the interpolation. Interpolate to lower resolution grid. So SVL, interp2, YA, XA prime, SVL, YA2, XA2 prime. Now one thing this would yell at us about um, I'm sorry, we need SVLB. This is binary, and interp2 does not like binary functions. It likes double floating point precision. So we will make that a double, and then it won't yell at us. Okay, let's go ahead and display SVL, which is the down sampled version. Now we're going to say show res lower resolution lattice. It's a good idea to look at this to make sure we didn't choose too low of resolution. We'll call it the title reduced lattice and we'll subplot to 132. All right, let's go ahead and run this and see what we get. Does not look too bad. How many points did we start off with? Let's check that. So we started off with 7,000 points and we're now down to 100. And if you remember seeing this, it really didn't look a whole lot different. So we've done ourselves a huge favor here. And this will match, mesh much, much faster. So that is our next step to mesh. And we're not going to be using any calls from MATLAB that belong to a toolbox. It's all built in. So it'll be a little bit more awkward than I think it could be. So we're going to mesh this using ISO caps. And ISO caps actually requires a three dimensional array. So what we'll do is we'll take SVL and stack it on top of itself. Stack SVL. So SVL. Um, remember, we have this rotated sense of X and Y. So just to sort all that out, we're going to be doing some rotating and flipping so that our mesh comes back in the orientation we expect. OK, now we actually stack it. SVL. Second layer just equals SVL. So that does it. Now we have a three-dimensional grid. Now we're ready to mesh it using ISO caps. Generate mesh. And we want to output faces and vertices because we're going to save this as an STL file. ISO caps. We'll give it our grid axes. 
We need an XA2, a YA2. We also need a ZA2 now that we have a three-dimensional array. Well, we didn't calculate that. And since we're not really using the Z dimension anyway, we just put in any number that's convenient, 0, 1. We'll give it the 3D array, and we'll give it the value to generate the ISO surface about. SVL is approximately binary, zeros and ones. So we give it a value of 0 0.5, and it meshes a surface around the objects in SVL. We also don't want ISO caps on every single surface of that 3D array. There's six sides. We only want one. So we'll tell it just to mesh Zmax. Could have also said Zmin. This means either the top or the bottom surface. So we only have one mesh. Let's go ahead and show the mesh. Make sure we got the right thing. So we'll subplot to 133, three, the last plot. Let's fill in a color. Let's make it a grayish blue. So that's our grayish blue. Three numbers, RGB. So the red and green content is both 0.6. The blue content is 1.0. We will draw the faces using the patch command. And we'll give it the faces. F, vertices, V. And we'll make the faces the color C that we just defined. As always, axis equal tight because we want equal proportioning for these spatially variant lattices. Otherwise, we'll get strange to look at, I think. 0, 090 means we're going to look straight down on this mesh. And we'll give the plot a title. Mesh. Draw now. Okay, if we haven't made any mistakes, we should see our mesh. Let's zoom in on our mesh. Because there's some problems I think we'll need to fix. Notice how wiggly and jagged these sides are. That's because when we, when we downsample to this low resolution grid, we have staircasing happening because we have so few pixels. So there's a very clever way we can smooth this by blurring. What we want to do is actually blur this high resolution lattice over however many pixels here represents one pixel in our reduced lattice. So let's say every 10 pixels in this high resolution lattice is one pixel in the reduced lattice. We will blur over the proximity of 10 pixels and then interpolate down. And what we'll have is a bunch of numbers going around the edges that are intermediate values that tend to numerically smooth those edges. And then when we mesh it with this ISO surface, it comes out looking much better. So let's do it. A picture's worth a thousand words. So let's go ahead and do it. So we're going to go back up to interpolate to lower resolution. And we're going to add a command here. And we'll say SVL equals SVL blur. We'll give it the lattice to blur, which at this point is the binary lattice. And we want to give it how many pixels that we want to blur over. So we need an array containing two numbers saying how many pixels are on the high resolution lattice that corresponds to one pixel on the low resolution lattice. So an easy way we can do this is to give it the number of points on our low resolution lattice and then just do a point by point divided by the number of points on the high resolution lattice. So that should do it. Let's try it again. Oh, sorry, since we blurred it, now we have to put SVL as the input argument down here or the blur wouldn't have done anything. Let's go ahead and run this. So the blur function, because our high resolution lattice had so many points, was taking a little while. So I, I paused the video so you didn't have to wait at all. But it was only about 10 seconds. But look at our low resolution lattice now. We have intermediate numbers, if you will, around the triangles. So now when we interpolate where that ISO surface is, it comes across a lot smoother. Let's zoom in on the mesh to see that. 
and see how the edges are much smoother. We see, see a little bit of jaggedness. We could fix that by making our low res lattice a little bit higher resolution. There'll be more triangles, the meshing will take longer. And so you can play around with this. One thing I noticed that we might do a little bit different is that right now we're meshing the triangles. What we might want is a solid lattice with the triangles missing. So what we could do is go back in the beginning and just invert our high resolution lattice. Let's go do that. So as soon as we read it in, we'll invert it. SVLB SVLB equals 1 minus SVLB. And now it will do everything inverted. Another thing we can play around with just to see what happens. Let's go up to 150 points on our lower resolution grid. Let's see what happens. Now here I won't pause the video so you can get an idea of, of how long it takes to run. But notice our high resolution lattice now is inverted. And that's all it took. And there's many points in this process that we could invert our lattice. We could just subtract it from one and do that. Okay, so it didn't run too long. And now we have a solid lattice with missing triangles. Okay, we have one more thing to add, our next section of code. which is save to STL file and make this real easy. We use SVL CAD, which is on the course website. We'll name this SV lattice2d.stl and we give it the faces and the vertices and that will be it. Now rather than rerun everything, I will highlight that command and hit F9. Now this can take some time. This lattice isn't too bad, so it won't take too long, but very large lattices can take a while to save, particularly if you're saving over a network. I would recommend if you have a large STL file that you're creating, at least save that locally first while MATLAB's saving it, and then drag and drop it, and that'll save you a lot of time. This is also another reason why we use this lower resolution grid, not only so the meshing was faster, so that we can save it to an STL file faster. There's really no reason to keep using that super high resolution grid after you've constructed the lattice because usually the lattice unit cells themselves don't have the, that abrupt of changes as their highest frequency gradings, if you will. So I will go ahead and pause this video and start it again once we've saved. Okay, hit that saved. It took maybe another 30 seconds after I paused the video. I noticed we have an H180. We're missing a semicolon somewhere and it's right after the patch command. So that is it for this session. We have saved an STL file. In the next computer session, we'll load that into Blender.